Hello and welcome to the channel. Happy uh -huh. August 2nd. Yes. To remind us, this month's theme is pragmatism. And today's entry is, we can work anyway. It starts with a quote by Musonius Rufus. Indeed, how could exile be an obstacle to a person's own cultivation or to attaining virtue when no one has ever been cut off from learning or practicing what is needed by exile? Read it again, please. Indeed, how could exile be an obstacle to a person's own cultivation? or to attaining virtue when no one has ever been cut off from learning or practicing what is needed by exile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like people might have excuses to say, well, um, I moved to America, so I, I no longer can do something that I used to do back in Slovakia, let's say, or something, you know what I mean? Like um, the culture makes me do something, right? But ultimately, it's like, well, no, that's just an excuse. You know, you, this actually you have, you can choose to do anything. It's just you're excusing it and putting it some label that why you can't do something. Yeah, yeah it's like prison, you know, because when he says exile, I think prison. I think like the worst situation mm -hmm. that somebody could possibly be in. Right. And... Even in that situation, it's like there's still some things that are mine and mine only. And it, the situation doesn't have the, the power on its own to like take control of the things inside me. I can give the situation power to do that. But ultimately, I can practice the tools of philosophy under any conditions, circumstances, situations, regardless of what they are. Right. I, I think I am still weeding out excuses from my life. Because sometimes I don't even know that it is an excuse. I'll say it and then I'll be like, oh wait, like that's not a real reason why I can't do this or I have to do this or It's know. like a made up reason that sounds good. And I pray it's a little bit of a little bit of logic went into it at some point and it's like, yeah, it's because of this and this and this. Yeah. And then that's where it stops. But if we revisited that logic and actually went down, we already know. We already know that yeah. that logic doesn't fit, but we let it fit. Yeah. We, it's like a, it's the Santa Claus thing, right? It's exactly that, right? Like we know Santa Claus is not there, but we still, we still want presents from the same time. Like, come on, right? Like it's that, it's like, it's like we allow ourselves to lie to ourselves, even though we know better, but we're just like, no, that's why I don't want to do that. This is why, you know, but. Yeah, we definitely know at some level when we're lying to ourselves. And I'm going to use the word that <laughs> makes it sound like there's an excuse here. But... <laughs> well, there's like, some we, legitimate reasons. We know that reasons, we're lying to ourselves at some level. But we're also like lying to ourselves so much throughout the course of the day mm -hmm. that like there's other things that are like higher priority to figure out and deal with than like this excuse that I'm making about why I can't quit smoking. Well, right and now. one thing or, is that one thing is uh, excuse. There's also ex differences between excuse versus preference, right? Someone might say, "I prefer to smoke. That's why I don't quit." Well. Yes, you might say that it's your preference, but but if if you were not smoking, it would never be your preference, <laughs> right? So it's so it so then then that that that's not a preference, right? Because you can't if could you then choose not to? Like no, it's hard, right? Yeah, so it's like, it's there's lots of like clever ways we can dress up our excuses, right? Like oh, this is just what I prefer mm -hmm, to do, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I prefer to have a big lunch and a, and a dessert at lunch 
So there is all this time before I go to bed, right? So I have a big lunch and a cake with it. So yes, yes, you know, like we, we say this, right? But it's a 2,500 calories total for lunch, right? And then we have a dinner and breakfast and snacks in between or something. You know what I mean? Like people might say like, like that's where they allow themselves to do something, but they, but they know it's like too much, right? Yeah. So, somewhere deep inside they know it's too of much course, right. but yeah. then but the 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 feeling um that that it helps that habit to deal with is stronger right and the, and they need the relief of that whatever that is right alcohol food right and that's what i was like driving at with like there are other priorities in the system like there's yes, other yes, 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 stuff yes. that needs mm-hmm. to get taken care of before I can level with a hundred percent of my excuses. Like all of the excuses need to get like mm-hmm. prioritized. And it's like, okay, well like, let me deal with this one first. Cause this one's creating the most chaos in my life. Mm-hmm. And now this one's creating chaos. So maybe you're making a list of them in some way. I mean, it's, I don't think it's like a formal thing. I think I'm, I'm just sort of like, well, it's like, I don't know. I don't know them. That's my, my point right. is that I don't know them. So it's like, well, when I notice one, what should I do with it? Do I just remember it? I'm never going to remember that, right? So I'm like, I know I need to like write it down. So, oh, I'll make a list of these things and then prioritize them in some way on that list. Like what is really important to me? Is this one or that one? I think that the biggest mistake is that we actually don't write it down. We say to ourselves, no, this is cool. I just have to think about it. But it's like pull in and out, pull in and out. You might even have a moment where you say, oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's it. That's it. That's it. And tomorrow morning you wake up and you're like, wait, what? Oh, you go back into your own ways. Right. So it's like there is some magic about writing it down and of making a list. Of course. I mean, and checking I, it twice. I definitely journal a lot on like this is the type of stuff that mm-hmm. like if you just like look through my journal, like this is the type of stuff that I talk to mm-hmm. myself a lot about my process feels more like oh i'll see that i'm making an excuse for the first time and i sort of take that as like oh like when the student is ready the teacher appears like this is because i just noticed that this Mm -hmm. is an excuse that i'm making now i have to sort of pick it apart a little bit Mm -hmm. and do those three more logical steps with it to bring it to the place where i'm like either a this makes sense and this holds and i still choose this actively or this doesn't have legs yeah. to stand on and I need to do something else. Yeah. But the journaling can be a really helpful way to like flesh all of that stuff out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else on this one? Let's do Ryan. Yeah. Ryan says, late in his life after a surgery, Theodore Roosevelt was told he might be confined to a wheelchair for the remainder of his days. With his trademark ebullience, he responded, All right, I can work that way too. This is how we can respond to even the most disabling turns of fate. By working within whatever room is left. Nothing can prevent us from learning. In fact, Difficult situations are often opportunities for their own kinds of learning, even if they're not the kinds of learning we'd have preferred. Musonius Rufus, for his part, was exiled three times, twice by Nero and once by Vespasian. But being forcibly expelled from his life and his home didn't impinge on his study of philosophy. In this way, he responded by saying, all right, I can work that way too. And he did, managing to squeeze in some time between exiles with a student named Epictetus and thus helping to bring Stoicism to the world. That's so interesting that Musonius Rufus was exiled three times. So I imagine him like saying the quote, like, this was like a real thing that he went through. Mm-hmm. And what is exile like? He was asked to leave Rome or Roman or a Roman Empire, like go mm-hmm. to go to Spain or something or whatever, yeah. Yeah. or someplace else. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that he brings in F. Uh, no, Theodore Roosevelt. Um, 
with the disabling stuff because like that's also a really big thing like when we don't feel healthy it can be really easy to feel like so much is outside of our control even like the health of our body that it feels almost like what's the point of trying to like really press on and live the best life that you possibly can within the new container, like the new constraints of the system of like, fuck, I don't have this ankle working for me anymore or like, you know, whatever the case may be. No excuses. I got a lot of excuses. Don't we all? Yeah, it's all good. All right, see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining. We'll see you tomorrow.